Hi everyone, my name is Kate Ford. I'm an educator and parent of a child with disability and I'm joined today with Julie. Hi, I'm Julie. I'm a speech pathologist and I have been supporting children with transitions for a number of years. And we're here today to talk about working with your child's school to support a successful transition back to school after COVID. So I think, um, Julie, we'll start with the first thing that we've been talking about, and that's maintaining or re-establishing those communication lines with your child's school and their teacher. So your child's teacher is probably the first point of contact for you um, to discuss how your child has been progressing throughout lockdown, um, give them an update of anything that's happened with your family, and for you to get information to support a successful transition back. Today, the government released information that schools will be opening sooner than parents expected. Uh, so now is a great time for you to get in touch with your school once the holidays are over um, to re-establish those communications, whether that be via Seesaw, via email, your child's teacher and your child's school should be the first point of contact of any concerns that you have regarding transitioning back to school. And I would also say, Julie, that if there are any families out there that have any concerns, questions, or need any further support, that it might even be good to suggest a phone meeting or a Zoom meeting to talk to your child's teacher, assistant principal, learning support team, um, or even principal if needed, just to clarify any concerns or worries that you have as a parent of how to support your child's transition back to school. So, so Kate, uh, you know, that sounds like a great idea. What do I need to do to make sure that, you know, we can get that, you know, open two-way communication happening? Okay, that's a good question. I think the first um, way to do it is to contact the school. Some families are in contact with their teachers via seesaw and might have the option to message their child's teacher. Some teacher, uh, parents can phone the school. Um, schools will be open from Tuesday. They'll be operational. So you can give them a call and ask for your child's teacher to call you back. And you can also email the school's email address. That would be my first um, option, Julie. Oh, okay. So, so I, I, I can start contacting my school now. Um, what information would it be really helpful if I shared with them? I think it'd be really good if you give an update of what's been happening in lockdown. Um, give them some insight and some positives that have been happening with your child, some wins and successes. Also give them an update of how they've been engaging in remote learning, as well as any updates around their health. This information will be able to prepare them for the child's return. They may be um, medication changes, there may be um, accessibility changes um, from your child throughout the few months that they've been away from school. And we want to make sure that schools are in the best position that they can be for your child's return to school. And so that communication is so important with the school, so they're updated and they can best prepare for your child to come back to the classroom. Wow, that makes me feel so much more reassured, Kate. Thanks. <laughs> I think it's really good to also share some strategies that you've been, in, you're implementing at home to prepare your child to go back to school. So for example, if you've created a social story about returning to school, or if you're taking them for a walk up to the school gate each day, just to familiarize themselves with the school again, share this information with the school so that they know that you're being proactive about your child's needs in preparing them for their return. Um, and at, working with schools is a partnership. It's a partnership between parents and the school and your child. So make sure that you give them all the information they need so that they feel prepared when 
your child returns. But for those parents, Julie, I've heard that a lot of parents have a bit, they've got some concerns. Let's be honest. Yeah, about some, their kids some families returning. are really worried about going back to school, you know, because so, some of those worries are about, you know, COVID and, and things around COVID. Other, other families are just worried because transitions can sometimes just be really hard for their child. Yeah. So in these instances, the first point of call is discuss these concerns with your school. Whether it's a public, public school, private school, they're the best people to get your information from. There's so much narrative around school's return in the media, social media, um, and in the community. I think it's best if parents contact the school to see their options. See what options you have for their child, discuss the individual needs of your child and see what options the school can provide. Because every child is unique and every child's learning environment is unique. And so the school know your child best, as do you know your child. And in that partnership, you'll be able to make the decisions of when to return, how to return and what that's gonna look like. Right. So, Kate, it sounds like there might be opportunities for parents and schools to work together to get the best outcomes through this transition yeah. for their children. Absolutely. And I think that schools have done it really tough um, over the last few months, as have parents. And so I see this as a fresh slate to open up those networks again and work together in partnership to get your child safely back to school, but also to ease your mind of your concerns, to make sure that the school can address the health needs of your child and work in partnership to get them back to school safely. Wow. I th I'm sure, you know, most families out there are going to really enjoy getting their children back to school before the end of the year. Yes. All right. Thanks, Julie. Thanks.